Hi, I'm uh, Paolo Gavetta. I'm with the Interest Rates Division of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And today we're going to be talking about interest rates, and in particular, interest rate derivative products. These are the products that are listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and available to the public at large. We're going to talk about them and how to use them. The first thing to note before we talk about the products themselves is the fact that uh, a simple fact that asset prices and interest rates are inversely correlated. In other words, there's an inverse relationship between them. What this means is that when asset prices go up, the interest rates or the yields on those, on those assets uh, go down. And this is a common theme that runs right through all the interest rate products that are listed on the exchange, and it's something just to be aware of. We will talk about it through the presentation. This presentation, we will discuss two specific products. One is a short-term interest rate future called the JIBAR future, and the other one is a bond future. So let's go to the first one, which is the short-term interest rate future or the bond future. Let's look at that first. First, you're going to be asking me, what is, well, what is JIBAR? Well, JIBAR is the Johannesburg Interbank Agreed Rate, and it's effectively the average rate where South African banks borrow and lend money to their clients over various terms, one, three, six, and 12 months. Every day, that rate is fixed by a panel of banks at 11 a.m. And effectively, what we do with that rate is it becomes a, a barometer for short-term interest rates. And it becomes a benchmark for a number of products, including ours, that are used to hedge interest rate risk. Some of those products you would have heard of, they're called swaps and fras, and we use it for the JIBAR future. In understand, now we understand the, what the JIBAR rate is. Let's look at the future. And the future is effectively just the future value of that benchmark rate at a certain point in time. So looking at the, at the uh, timeline shown on the picture, if we sit on the 31st of May and we look forward over time, we'll see that we can uh, transact the September contract, which is the 15th of September, and we're effectively taking a view on the three-month rate at the 15th of September. What this does give us is direct access to the interest rate market in South Africa. Unlike most of the over-the-counter markets, which are the markets that the big banks and the, and the corporates play in, um, this, this market is transacted on a screen, on a traded screen, and that's the JSC's Neutron platform. We have 12 contracts extending uh, total, uh, up to two years out, and we have liquidity providers who are some of the banks who provide two-way market prices as seen on our graphs for all 12 contracts. So you can take positions on any of those 12 contracts going out over time. Let's look at the specifications for, for this, the futures. As you can see on our presentation, it's a contract size 100,000 nominal. Uh, it's quoted on an interest rate, and it has 12 expiries. The basis point value, in other words, how fast this contract moves is dependent on a fixed uh, equation. It's 2 rand 50 per basis point per contract. This, co this uh, equates to 25 rand per million rand notional movement. And obviously, being a future, it's marked to market explicitly daily for margining purposes. To understand the trading mechanism, I must go back to the first thing I said at the beginning of the presentation, which was that the uh, rates and prices move uh, opposite to each other. So if there's an, the expectation is that rates or interest rates are going to come down or fall, we'd be buying the future or going long the future. And obviously, the contract value if that takes place, will rise. In likewise fashion, obviously, if interest rates are expected to rise, we would sell the future. So the f simple rule of thumb is we buy high rates and we sell low rates. And the trading screens, of course, that we look at will show the, the bid rates higher than the asking rates on screen. As a trading example, let's look at the example that we've got up here. Uh, we see that if a dealer expecting, is expecting interest rates to decline over time, he could go into the market and buy, let's say, 100 jar bar futures at a rate of 6.58%. The margin on, on that contract is 80 rand per contract. So therefore, on, uh, on 100 contracts, that would be 8,000 rand margin on that trade. And on expiration, assuming the jar bar closed at 6.25%, that's a 33 basis point movement, the profit made by that dealer would be 8,250 rand. And that's based on... 8,000 Rand margin. So you can see the gearing effect straight away from a futures position. 
Finally, as regards the Java future, we can see it can be used for a number of different reasons. Uh, obviously, to hedge interest rate risk, to take positions on rate expectations from the Monetary Policy Committee. This is the committee that um, sits every two months. And at this committee, the uh, Reserve Bank governor decides on how, how repo rates should move. So we have now direct access to that rate. Obviously, investors can manage money market portfolios and take uh, advantage of any arbitrage opportunities. Note that in international markets, of course, the equivalent short-term interest rate future is called the Eurodollar future, and that's probably one of the biggest um, or the largest trading uh, market in the world of any future. So it is, it is certainly a, a very big market worldwide. That was the, that was the Java future. Now moving on to the other product which is available on, on the JSC listed market is the bond future. Firstly, let's go into, I don't want to go into full details on, on how a bond works, but briefly, what is the, how does the bond dynamic work? As you can see from the, from the presentation, it's effectively a loan playing capital plus interest. So an issuer of a bond is looking for money. An investor will buy the bond, effectively lending money to the issuer, and for that will earn an interest rate over time, as well as the capital, either at the end or at some point in time. That's, that's briefly what a bond is. Now, obviously, that bond trades very similarly to the job of future on a, on a, on a, in an interest rate. That interest rate is called the yield to maturity. And as we mentioned before, as interest rates go down, prices go up. So we have an interest rate. Uh, what we have with uh, interest rates is that the impact is not symmetric. So on high interest rates, we have price movements that are not the same as when there are low interest rates, uh, movements in those interest rates. The, the, that's the yield or the yield to maturity on the bond future. Now, obviously, the, we have to have a price for that instrument, and that price is determined by a standard bond pricing formula as determined by the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Now, that, that's the bond, obviously. The bond future itself is merely the value of the bond for a future settlement date. The futures price will trade at a different level to the spot price or the underlying value of the bond, but over time those two prices will converge upon each other and at expiry they will be exactly the same thing. This allows the market participants to hedge the exposure because they know they can hedge the underlying exposure in bonds by merely trading the future over time. Let's look at some of the, the bond futures characteristics. Um, we have single bond futures, in other words the, the futures actually on a single bond and these are all government bonds. The expiry dates on the Thursdays of the February, May, August, November cycle. One contract is 100,000 nominal, and it's physically settled. This means that on the expiration of the, of the futures contract, the two market participants, in other words, the buyer and the seller, will enter an agreement to buy and sell the underlying bond for a time three days hence, three business days hence. So it's T plus three from the expiration of the bond future. So... Um, as I said, physical settlement on these bond futures. Important uh, trading dates. What we have here is if you sit today at uh, deal date D naught, you're buying the bond future, which will expire at, D, uh, at uh, time D1 on, on our graph. And at D1, obviously, the, the bond will settle three days thereafter at D2. So that just shows you how the time moves, over, uh, time moves through, the, through the process. Being a future, we have one of the big advantages of the gearing. Uh, initial margin is paid up front. This represents only a small percentage of the total notional amount of the bond that is being traded. And that allows, that allows the gearing to take place. The, uh, so therefore, the, the holder of the bond future is not, is not paying the full amount of the bond, is certainly not holding the bond in total, necessarily. And that gives them the gearing. Obviously, to this, uh, this brings risk into the equation, so therefore every day we do a market-to-market, -market, which is a, basically a valuation of that bond or that bond future, and that creates a variation margin. Variation margin is merely a payment of cash between buyers and sellers that represents the profit or loss on that bond on that day, or on that bond future on that day. Let's look at some, um, some of our bond futures examples. As we said, if we're looking for an interest rate decline, a decrease in interest rates, we're looking to buy a bond future, let's go along a bond future, and similarly to hedge an, uh, an upward, in, an upward uh, interest rate movement, we would sell the bond future. Specifically, we can look at, at some examples here. Um, if a corporate treasurer expects that interest to issue debt 
in uh, three months' time. His main risk would be that interest rates would kick up over the next three months and therefore uh, would make his bond issue much, uh, much more expensive. And in order to hedge himself against this, he would enter into the, into the bond futures market and sell bond futures, thereby uh, allowing some of the um, profit made on the bond future to offset the, the loss that would he would incur on issuing the debt at a later point in time. That, that is how, a, a, a very briefly, a corporate treasurer could take care of, could use uh, bond futures to hedge positions that he has in the market. Um, in terms of portfolio managers, who are the people who, who uh, manage money in terms of uh, pension funds and provident funds, uh, they obviously hold these, these bonds uh, for, the, for the duration of the bond. Um, so they're along the bond, they hold, hold portfolios of them, and they also have problems if interest rates increase, and they would be able to sell bond futures then to hedge uh, a possible increase in interest rates, thereby offsetting some of the losses that they would incur in that bond portfolio. Similarly, one of the other jobs portfolio managers have is duration management. That, this allows them to, uh, firstly, what is duration, I guess, is, is the question. Is, uh, it's the weighted average time to maturity. What the uh, buying and selling of futures allows us is to make deviations from the benchmark duration of a, of a portfolio. So by managing duration by bu buying or selling bonds, you can adjust the sensitivity of the entire portfolio to interest rate movements, depending on how you see various parts of the interest rate market moving. So as described in, in those three examples, we have a number of participants looking to do a number of different things. And, and, they can all, and they can use them using the bond futures. And we've seen it in hedging, in speculation, and in arbitrage. So the, what are the advantages of using this? Well, one of the big advantages, obviously, you have fairly low transaction costs in the market. And you have the benefit of uh, a mitigated credit risk, where a clearing house underwrites the risk uh, of transacting in this market. Well, we spoke about two, two different products both the Java futures and the bond futures. And this, uh, we have decided that this allows us direct hedging in the interest rate markets. Um, obviously, interest rate volatility impacts economic fundamentals and the prices of, prices of goods and services in the economy as a whole. And this, these products allow us to hedge some of those interest rate risks directly through the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We hope that uh, you will look into these products and use them for your benefit. Thank you.